Hi, data science and bioinformatic lovers. Welcome back to our channel. We hope so that you will be enjoying our content. In this video, we will talk about the Markov model and its application in a prediction of the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic gene. Hopefully, this video will be very informative for you. If you want to learn the basis of the bioinformatics or molecular dynamics simulations and the docking in a lot of details, then please join us in our bestseller courses on the Udemy. We are providing you the discounted coupons. You can find out the links in the description below. So let's start the today video. Let's talk about the Markov model. This model is extensively used to predict the coding regions. Primarily, this was not designed for the prediction of genes. This model was developed in earlier 20th century to recognize the pattern. Let's take a simple example to understand the Markov model. Suppose you are standing at a traffic signal and the light is red. You know that after the red there will be the yellow light and after the yellow there will be the green light. As you can see that there is a chain of event from red to yellow and yellow to green light which are occurring one after another. The occurrence of one event determines the probability of the next event. This probability is known as the transition probability. It means that the probability of occurrence of yellow light depends upon the occurrence of the red light which occur before the yellow. This chain of event is known as the Markov chain. Sometime there may be the unknown or unobservable factors which may influence the transition probability. In this case, the straightforward Markov model cannot be applied. And there is another model which is known as the hidden Markov model. Normally, for the gene prediction, hidden Markov model is used. There are different orders of hidden Markov model known as zero order Markov model, first order Markov model, second order Markov model, and so on. In zero order Markov model, the occurrence of event is independent to any previous event. This indicates the total randomness. The non-coding regions show the zero-order Markov model because in these regions the occurrence of every nucleotide is independent to the previous one. In the first-order Markov model, the occurrence of event probability depends upon the one previous event, while in a second-order Markov model, the occurrence of event depend upon the two previous events. The same is true for the higher order Markov models. Now, which order of a Markov model is used for the prediction of genes? Can you guess? It's a sixth order Markov model, which is used for the prediction of genes. Because the occurrence of the two genetic codes can be determined using a sixth order Markov model. In the presence of the two genetic code, anywhere in the genome cannot be by chance. In the practical tutorials, you will learn to use F genes B for the prokaryotic gene predictions and F genes H for the eukaryotic gene prediction. Both of these programs are based on the hidden Markov model. Hi, in this tutorial, we are going to talk about prokaryotic gene prediction. In regular lectures, we have discussed in detail about the various features which are associated with the prokaryotic gene and as well as many different algorithms which can be used to make a prediction about the prokaryotic genes. In this tutorial, we will use a famous tool for a prokaryotic gene prediction and this is known as FGenesB. This tool is available at the softberry.com website. To get access of this tool, you need to come on the softberry.com website and you need to click on this drop down button in front of run programs online. 
when you will click on this drop down button there will be a menu and in this menu you need to click on this third option opron and gene finding bacteria when you will click on this one then you will be on the next page and this on this next page there are going to be many different tools which can be used to make a predictions about the prokaryotic genes among all of these tools we are going to use the f genes b right now and in front of f genes b you can see that there is a brief description about this tool and this description is telling us that this tool is going to use the Morkov chain based recognition system to make a predictions about the prokaryotic gene at this point we are expecting that you guys would have a good idea about the Morkov chains on the Markov pattern recognition system. Now to get an access to the F genes B we will simply click on this one and when we will click on this one we will land to the next page which is dedicated for F genes B. Now here we will paste our protein uh, paste our DNA sequence about which we want to make a prediction. Let's assume for a moment that right now we have a one bacterial gene uh, sorry, we have a one bacterial DNA sequence and we want to make a prediction about that sequence that this sequence is uh, is going to have any gene or this sequence is just a non-coding DNA. So we will select this sequence, we will copy it and then we will paste this sequence here in this box. After pasting that sequence in this box, below here we will select the organism. Now, if there is an organism available uh, uh, for, uh, for you, so then you will select the organism uh, from where you have taken the DNA sequence. But if that organism is not available here in the list, then you will select the closely related organism to your organism from where you have taken the DNA sequence. In our case, our DNA sequence belongs to a bacteria and this bacteria uh, is not present in this list and so that's why we are going to select the closely related bacteria to our bacteria from this list which is this one after selecting the most uh, appropriate organism in the from the list we will simply click on this process button or we will or the submit button so when we will click on the process button then after the few moments we will have the prediction about our submitted DNA sequence. As you can see it here that the F genes B predicted a total seven genes in our submitted DNA sequence and among the seven genes there are the total five transcription units and among them there are going to be the two operons. We are expecting it that you guys would have a good idea right now about the operons. The operons are the uh, are, are, uh, is a phenomena which is only associated with the bacterial genome, and in the opron, the multiple genes are regulated by the single regulatory element or the promoter. Now, what does it mean that there are the five transcription unit and the seven genes? So let's try to understand. A one transcription unit basically refers here. Uh, a part of the DNA or the sequence of the DNA which is going to make a one messenger RNA. As you can see it here, if you will look at it here, so this is an opron. In the opron there are the two genes, one and the two. You can see it here, there are the two genes in a one opron. But we will consider this opron as a one transcription unit, as a single transcription unit. So based on this one, we have a seven. Uh, sorry, we have a five transcription unit, but the total number of the genes are seven here. So let's try to understand the table here. So in this table, you can actually see it here. The total, the first column, you can see the total number of the genes present in our submitted DNA sequence. So this this table, uh, this first column is telling us that there are total seven genes. Then the transcription unit, the second column is telling us that the total five transcription unit. The first transcription unit is a single gene, which is regulated by its own promoter. The second one is also a single gene, having its own regulatory elements. The third transcription unit is in a form of an opron, having a two genes, one and the two. 
then there is going to be uh, this plus and the negative signs and what these plus and negative signs are telling you these plus and negative signs are telling you about the possible strand of the dna as you guys know it very well that the dna is a double stranded so there could be a plus strand and there could be the minus strand and the both strands could have the coding 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 sequences so here we are going to have an idea that the transcription unit one is on the plus strand of the dna while the transcription uh, transcription unit two is on the negative strand of the dna then we are going to have an idea about their types so they are the cds there is written a cds the cds stands for the coding sequences finally we are going to have an idea about their start site and the end site so you can in in in, in our dna sequence so as you can see it here that the first transcription unit begins from 925 nucleotide and that's going to end at 1278 nucleotide and uh, and similarly the second transcription unit going to begin from 2321 position and that's going to end at 2521 position the last column is telling us about the prediction score but we are not going to talk about these prediction scores uh, in this tutorial in the table below you can actually see the predicted protein sequences uh, from these transcriptional units so the first transcription unit is going to make this protein this is a protein sequence and we are going to have an idea that this protein sequence is going to be 117 amino acid long and uh, this is a total uh, a total um, a length of the uh, gene which is going to make a 177 amino acids and same is about the rest of the other uh, transcriptional units so i hope so that uh, that this tutorial will be informative for you and after watching that video tutorial you will be able to make a predictions about the prokaryotic gene by your own by using the f genes b software stay tuned with us for a more informative tutorials on this channel hi in this tutorial we are going to talk about eukaryotic gene prediction like the prokaryotic gene prediction in the regular lectures we have discussed in detail about the main features of the eukaryotic gene and the algorithms which can be used to make a prediction about the eukaryotic genes in this tutorial we are going to use the f genes edge software this software is based on hmm pattern recognition system at this point we are expecting it that you guys would have a good idea about hmm pattern recognition system hmm stands for the hidden markov model to access this tool you need to come to the softberry.com website and then you need to click on this drop down button in front of run program online when you will click on this drop down button you will have a menu and in this menu you need to click on gene finding in eukaryotes when you will click on this one then you will move to the next page and on this page you will have a multiple softwares available which can be used to make a prediction about the eukaryotic genes among these tools right now we are interested in f genes edge and in the description in front of f genes edge you can see that this is based on H H M M pattern recognition system we will simply click on f genes edge and when we will click on this f genes edge we will land to the next page which is dedicated for f genes edge here we will paste our nucleotide sequence for which we want to make a prediction about the eukaryotic gene for this tutorial we have our dna sequence from a chromosome number 11 of the human and we want to make a prediction that is there any gene present in this sequence so what we will do we will simply select and copy this whole sequence and we will paste this sequence here in this box then after pasting the sequence here in the organism tab we will select our organism from where from where this sequence has been taken as i told you earlier that this sequence belongs to the human so we will here we will select the humans and then we will simply click on this search button or the submit button when we will click on the search button or the submit button 
After a few moments, we will have the results about our submitted DNA sequence. As you can see it here, that the F genes edge predicted total 10 genes in our submitted sequence. And in these 10 genes, there are total 21 exons are also predicted. So the details about these predicted genes are given here in the table below. As you can see it here, and this is, this is gene number 1, this is gene number 2, this is gene 3, and so on and on. And the last, there is going to be gene number 10. Now, you can actually see the plus sign here in the next in the second column now this plus sign is indicating the strand as you know it very well that in dna there are the two strands and one strand is known as the plus strand while another strand is known as the minus strand and this prediction is made on a plus strand then on the third uh, column you can see the different features like here we are going to have tss the TSS stands for what? The TSS stands for the transcription star site. And then we are going to have CDS. The CDS stands for the coding sequence. As you can see it here, that there are the three coding sequence in the gene 1. Or in other words, there are the three exons in the gene 1. And finally, at the end, you can see the pole A. The pole A stands for the uh, poly A signal which is present normally at the downstream uh, region of the genes. So this is a complete gene see, uh, features. Similarly, for the second gene, we are going to have TSSS, which is the transcription start side. Then there are the three coding sequences or the exon. And finally, there is a polyase signal. And for the rest of the 10 sequences, we are going to have a same idea. For the gene 10, there is only a one coding sequence. And what does it mean? It means that in a gene 10, there is only a one exon. In the next column, we are going to have an idea about the start site of the uh, transcription start site. And then we are going to have an idea about the uh, start position from where the coding sequence uh, 1 or the exon 1 is going to begin and where the exon 1 is going to end. Similarly, from where the exon 2 is going to begin and from where the exon uh, 2 is going to end. And same is about the exon 3 and same is about the poly A signal. In this score column, there is going to be a score uh, for the prediction accuracy and we are not going to talk about that score in this tutorial. Then we are going to have the ORF. The ORF stands for what? The ORF stands for the open reading frame. So this is basically the length of an open reading frame, which is mentioned here. Column is a length column. And this length column is telling us about the total length of the coding sequences or exons. As you can see it here in gene 1, the first exon is 90 nucleotide long. The second exon is 222 nucleotide long, while the third exon is 129 nucleotide long. If you come below the table on this page, then you can have a full length gene sequence. So this is a full length coding sequence of a gene 1. And, and the below, you could also have the protein sequence, which is, which is going to be formed by this gene so uh, these are the there is going to be the 10 gene sequences and as well as the 10 protein sequences present below this table on this prediction page we hope so that after watching that video tutorial you will be able to make a prediction by using the f genes edge tool now one thing which we want to clarify it here that these are just a predictions and these predictions can be right and they can be wrong. You need to verify these genes by using certain other techniques. We hope so that this tutorial will be helpful for you. Stay tuned with us for the more informative tutorials.